Welcome back, LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk, uh, automatic water change episode featuring the Genesis Renew by Genesis Reef Systems. Um, see, my clothes have changed. We had a major flood and I got soaked. Gotcha! So, um, last night we filled this up, leak tested it, we filled it up with some water with bleach in it, let it run for a couple of hours um, and drained it. Refilled it with fresh water, with some dechlorinator, let it run all night long uh, to make sure this was good and clean because this is a new container and because of that we wanted to make sure that any toxins or any chemicals left in the manufacturing process um, were removed. So we did a thorough job uh, cleaning it this morning after we drained it, smelled perfectly clean the way it should. Um, we proceeded to fill it up with salt water from Jim's mixing tanks over there and began our tests. Now, one thing I failed to mention um, when we were going through the components of the Renew, um, or I may have mentioned it, but uh, when we were setting it up, um, were these little valves. Now, Genesis supplies two of these little valves. You can see them here. Um, these are designed to go in line on the fill line that goes into the metering bins up there. And essentially what they're for is when the pumps turn on to fill the metering bins, it should take just under a minute to fill them. You don't want it filling too fast because if it fills too fast, you know, blasting water on the lid and stuff like that. Um, so the idea is that you have these valves in line, you can restrict the flow a little bit on the inlet to the metering bins to keep the time, you know, just under a minute um, and, and try to balance them out so they both fill at the same time. Um, in our case, because, you know, we've got these metering bins high, we only needed a valve on one side. Uh, we needed to put a valve in line on the side coming from the new salt water and you could probably see it under there. Um, we have our little valve there in line and I had to restrict it a little bit because what we found is the line going to the sump you know is obviously much longer because it goes through the wall and around the back to Jim's sump and the end result was that the new salt water mixing bin or uh, the new salt water metering bin was filling much quicker than the waste watering metering bin so we slowed it down a little bit on the new salt water metering bin line to make sure it was balanced out so we got that covered uh, we've also cleaned up all the lines. We went and we double checked that both metering bins are level and again I can't emphasize this enough. The metering bins need to be level. If they're not level you end up with uh, more water going in than is going out or vice versa. So we double checked the level and you know while um, we had our screws pretty level there's a little bit of adjustment, a little bit of wiggle room there when you mount the metering bins so you can adjust it if you need to. And then we went and fastened all the lines down to the wall. Um, we've got some straps that mounted in there and you know we put some pipe holders here as well to kind of clean things up get lines out of the way um, so I mentioned that you know we transferred water over now Jim being an aquarium service guy also his mixing bin um, in the big container over there the 300 gallon bin was mixed at about 1021 um, Jim typically uses a hydrometer so I brought my refractometer over along with some calibration solution and you know a lot of these um, refractometers the instructions say uh, to calibrate with the ionized water, but really that's not great, especially if you're maintaining high salinity levels like 1025. Ideally, you want to calibrate with 1026 solution. Um, this is pinpoint 53 MS solution. Um, it's also 1026 rated, so you can use this with a refractometer. Uh, keep in mind that not all calibration solutions for probes and stuff like that are refractometer cal um, compatible. So make sure if you're going to get your calibration solution, you get something that is capable of calibrating a refractometer. Anyhow, so we calibrate with 1026 solution because that is a calibration point that is very close to natural salt water, which are the levels that we're targeting in a reef tank. Um, in this case, you know, we're targeting 1025, 1026, so calibrating to 1026 means that when we measure the salinity in our mixing tank, we're going to be pretty much spot on accurate, whereas if we calibrate with distilled water, uh, which I might have mentioned deionized water before, you want to calibrate, you know, with the, with the uh, calibration solution versus um, distilled water, um, which is often recommended with these probes. Not necessarily a good way to do it. Calibration solution is the best way. So Jim is going to need to add salt, um, and you know, we've got a little cup here that we'll add the salt with, um, which we've already raised the salinity in here to 1025. But uh, so we've got our uh, you know container there of salt. He's got a measuring device. We also added a little doorbell button here. This is connected to his apex, and when we press and hold this button for a few seconds, the mixing pump will turn on, and it's now going to stay on for one hour. And the benefit to that is when he adds salt to the container, he can hit that button 
and the pump will run for an hour to ensure that the salt gets fully mixed into the uh, container. So let's see, am I missing anything? So we've leveled everything, we've got all our lines and everything set up, uh, mixing containers all pumped, we had no leaks, everything works as planned. We've got our line here coming from his mixing tank to here so we can fill this container up. Uh, and then we've got everything set up. He put a little bucket under here or his five gallon jug so when he's going to a client's place that has a reef tank, he can fill up easily here and have 1025 or 1026 salinity water on hand at all times. Um, I did mention that we checked his water with his hydrometer. It was about 0 .005 off, so it was a little bit off, and that's one of the reasons why we emphasize using a refractometer versus a hydrometer. In his case, it was fairly accurate, but I've seen him off by, you know, substantially more. So if you have uh, the money, get yourself a refractometer, and be sure to get yourself some calibration solution. Um, so again, I think that pretty much wraps up the uh, wiring, the connections, everything else. Uh, the next step is going to be setting up and putting to use the Genesis Renew. So stay tuned for the next part and we'll get into configuring the Renew, the different features of it, and the benefits to it. Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk, Automatic Water Change Edition featuring Genesis Reef Systems Renew, um, in this case Renew Pro. Uh, so we've got everything set up, we've got everything tested, all lines run. The next step is putting the Genesis Renew to use. And I've mentioned, you know, that it's a very, very um, flexible solution. Um, it's also very quick. Um, so we're going to talk about the interface here. This is the Genesis controller. Um, there's two control buttons and this button here brings the water change volume up or down, so we got up here, um, you can go from 1 to 99. For Jim's sake, we're going to be doing daily water changes at 3 gallons a day, so we'll just set that at 3. This is the mode button, and you can change from continuous mode, meaning if you select 99 gallons and you have it set to continuous, it will do 99 gallons, 1 gallon at a time, one after the other after the other. Uh, then you have day which means we'll do whatever that number is, in this case three gallons a day and or week. You could select week there and we'll do three gallons a week and divide that evenly up over the course of a week. 
So continuous day week. Now we want this to repeat. So in order to make this repeat, as opposed to just doing a water gain, water change over the course of a day, uh, we want to do it every day. So you press and hold the mode button until you see it, the blue light flash. So our blue light is now flashed there. That tells us we're in continuous mode, or rather in repeat mode, and it'll flash every so often to let you know you're in repeat mode. Um, there's some other stuff on here um, which you don't really see there, but there's some indicators here that tell you if there's a problem. Now, we did have float switches for the Renew that we did not use, um, but it'll tell you if your sump level is too low or too high and it shuts the system off. These indicators will let you know um, that your level was too low or too high. So it's kind of intuitive and it'll give you some information if there's a problem. As I said, we're using an Apex now to control um, uh, his sump level and ATO and stuff like that. Um, the Apex is programmed to require the ATO float switch to be in a set state for three consecutive minutes before it'll trigger the ATO. And, and the way it's set up now, the Renew has plenty of time to finish its water change before an ATO event is activated. So the Renew will never trigger the ATO. But um, for ATO purposes, we did mention the storm earlier. Um, the storm connects to the Renew controller, and when the storm automatic top off solution is connected, it'll let you know that it senses a storm controller. Um, so if you have your storm connected, it'll pause the ATO automatically when the Renew is changing water, and the ATO, the storm ATO, will be reactivated once the water change is complete. Um, so the next thing here is this inner, is this button here, and, and this basically tells you what state or what process it's in. Um, it tells you when it's filling, it tells you when it's metered, meaning that the reservoir is full, um, and then it'll tell you when it's dispensing, which it'll dispense the water to the system and the wastewater to is drain over there, and then it'll tell you when it's in standby, meaning that process is over and it's done. Now, the other thing it'll tell you here is once we've initiated a water change, um, and say we're doing three gallons a day and we've only changed one gallon so far that day, it'll flash here one and then three, meaning it's done one gallon out of three gallons a day. So the next step now is to start the process. We've got it set to daily water change. We have it set to repeat. We now have it set to three gallons a day, so it's gonna change out three gallons a day and it's gonna repeat that every day. Next step is to hit the start button here, um, the cycle button, and we've now initiated a water change. So right now what's happening is the pump in his new salt water bin is turned on, the pump in the sump is turned on, and it's now filling his two metering bins up here. So after, in this case, about 30 or 40 seconds, once both those bins have filled all the way up, there's little float sensors in there that'll let the renew know that they're filled, it'll go to the next step. It'll let it settle for a moment, and you'll see, once it's full, water will drain back to the reservoir. So there's the overflow lines, which I mentioned earlier, which we'll see in a moment. So you can see it's overflowing here. That means that that bin there, the new saltwater bin, has filled up. The wastewater bin is just about full. It is filled up too, so you can see it's overflowed and gone back to the sump. So it'll sit in this state for a few minutes, or for rather for several seconds, and then it'll go into the dispense mode. So now it's dispensing new salt water to a sump, and it's dispensing the wastewater into his drain line behind his washing machine. just a moment it'll be finished with the dispense process. Alright, so we finished the dispense of new salt water into the sump. The process from start to finish took maybe a little over a minute, minute and a half. The wastewater is just about done dispensing. That has completed its dispense as well and dumping the wastewater into his washing machine drain. And it'll sit in this dispense mode with the solenoid valve open for several seconds, actually closer to a minute, to allow any residual water in there to drain out. And once that water is drained out, the solenoid will close, it'll go into standby mode until the next water change occurs. And again, if you set seven gallons a day or three gallons a day, it's going to divide those water changes up over the course of a 24 hour period. So essentially, that's how to use the Renew. Again, we have the mode button here. You can select continuous, daily, or weekly. Um, we can also set it to uh, 
to uh, repeat. So if you're doing daily water changes, it'll repeat every day or every week. A continuous water change, um, you know, a weekly water change, daily, whatever. You can set it to the increments that you want to do it, to the volume in gallons that you want to change out at any given time. And this is your start and stop button. If I want to cancel a cycle, you hit the uh, stop button there and hold it. Um, we've also got our Apex program so that if the sump level is ever too low or too high, it'll shut the renew off automatically. Uh, and it'll also send you an alarm as well. So, you know, we've got this thing pretty well dialed in. I think we've pretty well covered everything. I hope you've learned a lot. And uh, in the meantime, our renew is now in standby waiting for the next water change. So Jim is all set up. He does not have to do regular water changes anymore by hand. It's completely automated. Welcome to the 21st century, Jim. Woohoo! Hope you like your new renew. And again, I hope you guys learned an awful lot. Thank you to Genesis Reef Systems for building a great product. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you further in the next LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.